Well, Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Arindam Bakshi has shared the latest information regarding Operation Ajay amid the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas. Let's take a look at this report. ऑपरेशन अजय जो चल रहा है उसके तहत करीब 1200 लोग अभी वापस आए हैं पांच फ्लाइटों पर इसमें करीब 18 इनमें से नेपाली नागरिक भी शामिल है हम सिचुएशन का जायजा ले रहे हैं और आवश्यकता के आधार पर हम फ्लाइट्स और प्लान करेंगे आपने गाजा के बारे में पूछा था वहां पे पहले करीब चार लोग थे अभी एग्जैक्ट नंबर हमारे पास नहीं है कोऑर्डिनेट कर रहे हैं और मैंने कहा था करीब एक करीब बारह या तेरह लोग वेस्ट बैंक में थे गाजा में स्थिति ऐसी है निकलना थोड़ा मुश्किल है पर मौका मिले तो अगर वो निकल पाए कुछ रिपोर्ट्स हैं कि एक दो निकल भी आए हैं पर हम इसको गलत खबर मैं नहीं देना चाहूँगा अभी जब तक कंफर्मेशन नहीं आए पर इसराइल में अभी जो हमारा चल रहा है तेल से फ्लाइट्स वो अभी जैसे मैंने कहा करीब बारह निकले हैं पाँच फ्लाइट्स में और भी फ्लाइट्स हम प्लान कर रहे हैं जैसा डिमांड रहेगा उस तरह उसके बेसिस पे The most barbaric and wide-scale terror attack in decades, bigger than 9/11, was perpetrated 11 days ago, and it seems like this council has already forgotten. The pictures and footage from the October 7th pogrom are seared into my brain, in every Israeli's brain, forever. But it seems that I must remind some of you of what happened. Thousands of barbaric Hamas Nazis invaded Israel and brutally murdered 1,400 innocent Israelis as they slept, celebrated, hugged their families in fear, and cried for mercy. Well, CNN News 18's Anand Nersiman spoke with Israeli diplomat Danny Elin. Let's take a look at this conversation. Danny, this aspect. of those who come out and have a go at israel for causing damage in the gaza strip why don't they ever question the hamas because their rockets are killing innocents well it's a good question actually what we see here today is not just a, a, a battle between uh, truth and uh, and lies it's a battle between life and death and unfortunately you know hamas is part and parcel of the global jihadist movement which for them There is no coexistence. There is no peace. Only their way, and their way is an Islamic, Islamist uh, world. First of all, they would like to take Israel and the entire Middle East. By the way, Israel is not only the only one mm. on the crosshairs. It's also Egypt and the Lebanon and the Saudi Arabia. All those countries that uh, today uh, have a moderate uh, Sunni regimes. They are very much uh, supported by Iran. The Ayatollahs of Iran is the, they are the mastermind. They have their pro proxies throughout the, the, the Middle East. Uh, we're talking about Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad uh, in Gaza. We're talking about uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Houthis in uh, Yemen, the uh, militias, the Iranian militias in Syria and in Iraq, and also in. Uh, um, in the uh, area of uh, North Africa, like um, uh, Libya, Sudan, they have the Boko Haram in Nigeria, they are all over. Hmm. And for them, it's just the, the Nazis. They, are, they want to take over. It's a uh, very tough jihadist war, and we, have, we are in the front line. But hmm. uh, what um, the uh, President of the United States and the foreign uh, and the Prime Minister of England and the chancellor of germany and many other leaders understood and also millions of decent people around the world understood that the line mm. go crosses in gaza but on the two sides of the lines it's not israel and and the hamas or not mm. israel and the jihadists it is the uh, i would say the decent world the uh, western democratic world on the one hand and on the other hand it's just brutal jihadist ISIS type with whom there is no coexistence now who is behind all these jihadists we have Iran we said but unfortunately it's not just Iran we have also two mighty powers that support them mm. and uh, one of them is China which mm. is the main backer of uh, Iran and its economy and we have Russia which helps them uh, with uh, military equipment and uh, and uh, also with the um, political cooperation.